Well, this is a first. I open up OBS to show you in a tutorial and it looks completely different. Why? Because they released a new update with a lot of new features. So we're going to check that out right after this. TunnelBear is the fast and easy VPN service that keeps your data safe and secure behind a bear. Sign up for your 7 day free trial and learn more via the link in the video description. Adam Vox here back with another OBS Studio tutorial. This time I'm taking a tour of OBS version 20.0.0 which is the newest version that just released. And this is now the second time that I'm having to record this video as I went to record it before and Shadowplay keeps hooking random things and it decided to record my entire tutorial at 1024 by 768 and while I said a lot of stuff better than I probably will here. I'm sure you don't want to look at it like this. So the main reason, the, the obvious reason that it looks different at the moment is due to the new theme. And I like that they're introducing new themes for the software, but I absolutely hate this theme. First and foremost, it makes the audio levels pink, which they're supposed to turn red if you clip or peek. So that's just going to be confusing. And secondly, it doesn't react to window scaling at all. You can see everything is super, super tiny. Even if I go like windowed mode, actually window mode just screwed up the preview size. But all the buttons are tiny, the text is tiny, and while that's partially because I'm on 4K, that's also just because this theme does not scale for some reason. So if I switch back to dark here, you can see, there we go, everything got bigger. So I don't know what's up with that. Uh, but the then the, the colors for the levels don't change, so I have to relaunch it for that to happen, which is a minor annoyance, but we can make it work. Secondly, they introduced a modular user interface, and this is one of my favorite features that they have added to this software in a long time and it doesn't even affect the overall streaming experience but I love customizable UIs I've hated the restrictions of their previous UI for example if I pull up my twitch scene collection here uh, I have so many scenes to switch through and I've been asking for like a for, for for me to change it instead of needing a scroll bar now I can perfect apparently they had to rehaul a whole lot about how the UI worked in order to make this happen but I am grateful for their work on the matter what you can also do is go to view and now you have some new options here, docs and unlock the UI. And now you have little buttons to pop out or get rid of entirely the different elements of the UI. And so you can resize them, you can reposition them. And so you can see here, I have decided with my layout, I have the video preview here, the mixer here. And then these are supposed to be smaller. These are supposed to be about here for the controls and the transitions. And there you saw the little red of the audio level. When I peeked on my webcam mic, it went red. And then if I go to view and lock UI and then relaunch the software, it keeps resizing things, which is a bit of an annoyance, especially when it says lock UI and it doesn't lock anything. I think that time, well, no, I had this more to the center. Like mainly it affects these two down here. It'll keep either squishing it vertically or just kind of snapping this over horizontally for some reason. And I don't really know why minor annoyance or bug with it or whatever, but you can customize the UI, which is amazing. Other features, they've added some fixes for Twitch and for Mixer, which I'm not really going to go into. They're pretty basic. They also affected the slideshow. Uh, but the biggest thing for me is they've added a bunch to transitions. So I don't know if at some point they already added these transitions, but you can now do uh, swipe, slide, cut. Those were already there, but you can now do fade to colors or luma wipes. And luma wipes allow you to do a lot. You have a huge drop down here. And I actually have a bunch of specific transition files to do this in editing, but they have it built into the software. So you can choose from all of these effects, which are pretty standard transitions in various video editing software. And it's really cool that you can do it in here. So I'm going to choose sinus nine. I don't actually know what that is, but then when I switch from one scene to the other with that enabled, whoa, that was actually a pretty cool effect. Automatically applies the transition. Now it looks a little weird since I'm switching to a four by three, but I can't really change that. That is pretty cool. The big thing, which has been one of the most requested features that I've seen in a long time, is the ability to add what they call a stinger transition. A stinger is a video clip, kind of like the Luma Wipes, but a dedicated video clip that you can make yourself to use as the transition. The, sting the video file itself plays as the transition. I have a lot of these here. Uh, let me do 28 frame. So you choose the video file, you browse, I have a whole transitions folder, you choose the video file, and then you choose whether you want to pick the time or the frame for it to switch, because it only switches scenes at a certain point, and usually that's the halfway point of the video. It fills up the screen, then you transition, 
then it unfills the screen. So I think frame 28 is right for this one. And then if I switch scenes here, fills up the screen transitions, wipes away. Really, really amazing. And this can step up the production value of your live streams or recordings a whole heck of a lot. You see this in a lot of cartoons and stuff when they have like the face of the main character or something spin in from the center, fill up the screen, and then pop back out and you're somewhere else. Really cool, been requested for a long time, but this brings up a new feature request that I really, really want to see because otherwise this is going to get annoying because like especially with lengthier transitions, switching between scenes and having that play every time could get a little tedious. And if you're doing a self-run stream, you don't have the ability to quickly switch transition types and go back and forth is to be able to set per scene transitions so that when I go to scene A, it automatically uses transition B. When I go to scene Y, it uses transition X and that you could just apply that as an assigned transition for that scene. In my advanced scene switcher tool that I use, the plugin, it has that built into the scene switching for automatic scene switching, but not for the manual, hey, I'm just switching scenes on the fly. So I would love to see that. Also in here, they've given us the ability to lock our sources, which may sound a little silly, but again, back in something like my Twitch scene collection, when I have a bunch of stuff going on, your base layer, your gameplay, your face cam, whatever your main scene is, when you're messing around with your overlays and stuff, you don't want to accidentally move that around. And it is super easy to be clicking around and accidentally screw up your base layer, and it's very hard to get back to it. So now you can just lock it and never mess with it again. So if actually, if I lock both of these, can't do anything to either of these layers until I unlock them. Really handy. Kudos for finally implementing that. They've also introduced this little stats bar. This may not have been added specifically in this update. I was hoping that with the new modular UI, you would just be able to dock this somewhere, but you cannot. That's a little ironic and a little dumb. And I hope they implement this as something I can just dock up here to have extra stats along with what's at the bottom. Don't know why you can't yet, but am looking forward to that. Just gives you more information about what's happening while you're recording, which is always nice. More information is always good. And you can also enable a full screen interface for OBS, which kind of looks nice and can help keep things distraction free or keep you from accidentally clicking on stuff. Now, when you are customizing the UI, you have a toolbars option for list boxes, which I believe are these. Uh, at some point, I would like to see other toolbars become available. And if I was more competent at programming, I might make my own, but I'm, I'm not there. So whatever. Um, but you can also specifically uncheck or check uh, aspects of the UI, or you can reset it back to the default for whatever reason. And so that's kind of neat. And then again, you can lock it, but it doesn't necessarily lock. Uh, they've uh, they've updated the auto configuration wizard a little bit. They've improved the AMD encoder settings a little bit, which is nice because it's a nightmare to work with in OBS compared to NVENC. And uh, fix a couple minor things and some bugs and stuff. But these have been the main updates. And again, the new theme, which I hate at the moment. I hope they fix it. But these are the big updates, and I am super excited. This was a nice big update, and this came in literally, like, at most, maybe like a week or two before I start filming my big new OBS course. So that means I will need to tweak some scripts and update them because I need to include these features in it as well. Oh, I forgot to mention, I think I forgot to mention in this recording, they did add the ability for black magic capture cards to automatically detect the resolution or format, which sounds kind of dumb. Most capture cards do that. That is how things work. But black magic ones are super picky. Even in their own software, you have to, and in any third party software, you have to set the specific resolution, frame rate, all of that, or you will get no signal from it. And that's how it has always been. And somehow they have come up with their own black magic, haha, <laughs> pun, to allow you to, or to set it to automatically detect that, which is a really nice for those still using black magic cards. I've not owned one in a long time. I can't really show that off. I'd like to get one of their newer ones soon, but I don't currently. So all I can do is talk about it right now, but they've also updated the slideshow and things like that. But this has been a big update, super excited for it. Hope you are too. And again, big OBS course. I It's got like 50 videos in it. I will be starting filming this month. Like the video if you liked it and found it informative. Let me know in the comment section down below what your favorite part of this big update is what your favorite specific feature or update is and if you're looking forward to anything new i did want to add a note i forgot to mention it did not fix my issues with recording premiere while using cuda and invink at the same time i have forum posts in adobe forum i have forum posts on the obs forum i've got a forum post on linus tech tips forums 
trying to get responses from anyone I can to figure out this issue, but so far have been unable to do so. So just wanted to say, even though it seemed to have magically broken in version 18, it has not been magically fixed in version 17, or version 20, rather. So that saga shall continue. Hope you enjoyed. Comment, like, subscribe, all that jazz. I'll see you next time. Hopefully this recording didn't save and crap load resolution this time. EpostVox is a Patreon-supported production. Our videos would simply not be possible without the support and generosity of our patrons, whom you can see on screen right now. If you'd like to join the inner circle and get early access to videos, among other things, go to patreon.com slash to learn more.